In this video, I will explain how to solve the transportation problem using the least cost method. So let's check out an example here. Let's say we have three factories that produce some good, and we have four cities that have a demand for that good. So for example, factory one has a total supply of 35. So they produce 35 units of this good. And for example, city one has a demand of 45 units for this good. So for this particular example, the total supply of all of these factories, if we add up 35 plus 50 plus 40, that's 125. And we'll find that if we add up the total demand, so 45 plus 20 plus 30 plus 30, the total demand is also 125. So this is known as a balanced problem. So the total supply is equal to the total demand. So the idea here is that we want to meet the demand of each of the cities, and we want to do so by minimizing the shipping costs. So I've written down the unit shipping cost from each factory to each city. So for example, to go from factory one to city one, the unit shipping cost is $8. To go from factory one to city two, the unit shipping cost is $6 and so on. So we want to minimize the total shipping cost. So here's how we do that using the least cost method. The first step is we want to identify the cell with the smallest shipping cost. So if we look at all of the shipping costs, we can see that this cell right here has a shipping cost of $5. So that's the smallest of all of the shipping costs. Now, if you happen to have two cells that have the same minimum shipping cost, then choose the one with the higher demand. So in this case, $5 is the smallest and it's not tied with any other cell. So we'll choose this cell to start with. Now we can see that for this cell right here, it belongs in the column of city four. For city four, the total demand for this good is 30 units. So what we have to ask ourselves is, this $5 in shipping cost, this can be met by factory three because that's the row that it's in. And factory three has a total supply of 40. So can we go ahead and meet the total demand using just factory three? Yes, we can because the supply is greater than the demand. So what we're going to do is we're going to write a 30 right here and we'll say, let's send 30 units from factory three to city four. And what that means is once we've sent these 30 units, the total demand has been met. So we can cross that out. And we're going to reduce the total supply from factory three by 30. So we'll do 40 minus 30. So it leaves us with 10. So that means factory three still has 10 units of supply that it can supply to the other seats. Now, what we'll notice is that the demand for city four, remember the total demand was 30. We just met the total demand. So that means we're not going to send any goods through these two routes because the total demand is already met. So for example, we wouldn't send, let's say five units through this shipping route because then our total supply would be 30 plus five, which exceeds the demand. So since the demand is already met, we can cross out these two cells because we're not going to use them. Okay, and now we just repeat the process all over again. So of the remaining cells, now which one has the smallest shipping cost? Well, that would be this one right here with a shipping cost of $6 per unit. So we can see that this belongs to the column of city two. So the total demand for city two is 20. So can we meet this total demand of 20 by using the supply in factory one? Yes, we can because the supply is 35. So we're going to go ahead and send 20 units through this shipping route because that will meet the entire demand. So we'll cross out this 20 because now we've met the demand and we'll reduce this 35 by 20. So 35 minus 20, that leaves us with 15. So we have met the total demand for city two. So that means these cells will no longer be used because we don't need to send any units through these two shipping routes since the total demand is already met for city two. So now if we look at the remaining cells, which one has the lowest shipping cost? Well, that would be this $8 right here. So we can see that city one has a total demand of 45. So let's meet as much of that demand as we can using this $8 shipping route. So we can see that the supply left in factory one is 15. So let's use up all of that 15. So we'll cross that out and we'll put a 15 right here. So 15 of the total demand of 45 can be met. So we'll cross out the 45 and let's make that a 30. Okay, now from there, let's look at the remaining cells and let's identify the next lowest shipping cost. So that would be the $9 right here. So we can see that we have a demand of 30 that we still need to meet for city one. So how much of that can we meet through factory two supply? Well, factory two still has a supply of 50, so we can meet that entire demand of 30. So we'll reduce the 50 by 30. So 50 minus 30 is 20. And we'll go ahead and put a 30 right here so we can meet the rest of this demand. So now that demand is met, so we'll cross it out. And now the total demand for city one, which originally was 45, that has been met. So we'll cross out this cell because we aren't going to need it to meet the demand for city one. So now if we look at the remaining cells, which one has the lowest shipping cost? Well, that would be the $10 right here. 
Now we can see that the supply for factory one has already been exhausted. So actually we can't use this route and we actually should have crossed out this cell earlier. So the remaining cell should actually be 13 and 16. So of these two, which one is the minimum? Well, that would be 13. So we can see that city three has a total demand of 30. So let's see if we can meet as much of that demand as possible using this shipping route. So the supply left for factory two is 20. So we'll go ahead and cross out that 20 and we'll use up that entire 20 right here. So we can cross out that 30 since we just met 20 of the demand and we'll reduce that to 10. Now in the very last cell right here, we can see that the total supply of factory three is down to 10 and the total demand left in city three is also 10. So we're going to fill those 10 units of demand right there. So the supply will be completely gone and the demand will also be reduced to zero. So this is our final answer for this one. So to find the total shipping cost, here's what we can do. Our total cost is we're sending 15 units from factory one to city one with a shipping cost of $8. So let's write that down. We have 15 times $8. Then we're sending 30 units through this route with a shipping cost of $9, so let's write that down. And then we're sending 20 units through this route with a shipping cost of $6, so let's write that. And then we have 20 units right here with a shipping cost of 13, so we'll write that. And then we have 10 units being sent through this shipping route with a unit cost of $16, so we'll add that to the list. And then lastly, we're sending 30 units through this shipping route with a unit shipping cost of $5, so we'll add that to the list as well. So if you punch all of this into a calculator, the final total shipping cost comes out to $1,080. So that will be our final answer on this one. That's how you can use the least cost method as it relates to the transportation problem.